Hello students, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsham Ali Khan. Last two videos I have given the complete theory regarding the working capital and cash management. In this video, I'm going to explain you about the receivables management. So first of all, we finish off all the theoretical part of working capital and its components that is cash management, receivables management, inventory management, then we'll start the problems. But in examination part, from examination point of view, they may ask you the theory question also regarding this working capital, cash management, receivables management. So until and unless you are clear about the theoretical concept, you should not go to the problems. So this theory which I am going to explain you about receivables management is very important from examination point. So watch the video till the end. If you have not watched the earlier videos regarding working capital cash management, go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject financial decision making. Select the topic raising capital. Select the videos of working capital. Watch the videos. Enhance your knowledge. Be confident on the subject of financial decision making. So before starting the explanation of receivables management, take the screenshot of the points written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Receivables management. So before starting the management of receivables, first of all, you must know the meaning of the term receivables. Receivables are the amount due from credit customers. When a business sells goods on credit, the business will allow some credit period like one month, two month, three month. So after the expiry of the credit period, the customer will make the payment. So till the time the customer has not paid the amount, that amount is called receivables. So actually receivables will arise only when goods are sold on credit. If a business does not sell the goods on credit, only cash basis it, it is selling, then there is no question of receivables, no question of receivables management. So receivables management will arise whenever the goods are sold on credit. And nowadays, almost every business will sell the goods on credit. So receivables management is a receivables uh, account receivable is a part of the working capital. Under current assets, inventory, account receivable or trade receivable, cash in hand, cash at bank, these are the main items of current assets. So now, Trade receivables or account receivables are one of the important part of working capital. So it is the responsibility of the finance manager to have a proper control on the receivables management. So when the business sells goods on credit, there are some advantages and also there are some disadvantages of selling the goods on credit. So we have to make a trade off between benefit and cost. What are the benefits when we get when we uh, when the business sells goods on credit? Similarly, what are the disadvantages of selling the goods on credit that we are going to discuss? So, first of all, receivables management. Receivables are the part of current asset of the firm. First point. Under current asset, the main liquid form of current asset is cash. After cash, the next form, next, uh, I mean, current asset is uh, this one, receivables, trade receivables. Then the receivables are asset accounts representing the amount owed to the firm as a result of sale of goods or services in the ordinary course of business. This is the definition for receivables. Receivables are the amount owed by the customers for the goods or services purchased from the business in the ordinary course of business. Now the amount of receivables in the form affects is requirement of working capital. Because receivables are the part of current asset and when there is, whenever there is a change in the current asset, it will affect the working capital. So receivables management is a part of working capital management. 
Now the credit policy of the firm decides the amount of receivables to the firm. What is the credit policy? That means how much credit period a business will allow to the credit customers. There is no fixed policy. We cannot make any generalization that every business month must give two months credit period to the customer. We cannot make any generalization. Every business, the circumstances, the conditions are different. So different businesses will adopt different credit policies. Some businesses will give one month poly, one month credit period, some businesses two months credit period, some business three month credit period like that. So deciding the credit period, that is the most important part of receivables management. The finance manager of the firm should analyze cost and benefit associated with the receivables when deciding the investment in receivables. So the finance manager has the responsibility, active responsibility, he has to measure how much are the benefits the business is going to get by making investment in receivables. Investment in receivables means the business has to spend the money on the production, on the cost of the goods and sell the goods to the customers. The customers are not paying the money for one month, two month, three month. So our money is blocked. The business funds are blocked in receivables. That is called investment in receivables. The French manager has to decide what are the benefits and what are the cost involved in the investment of receivables. Thus, the credit policy and management of receivable in the form is becomes a significant. So, credit policy and management of receivables become a significant part or function of the finance manager. Now, account receivables management. We can call it as trade receivables or account receivables. There should be a proper management of account receivables from time to time. The fixed uh, account receivable uh, policy cannot be adopted because the conditions are changing. So business has to change, evaluate, manage the account receivable. So account receivable management is a process of ensuring that customers pay their dues on time. When we sell the goods to the credit customer, we'll allow a credit period like one month or two month. Credit, uh, account receivable management means we have to see whether our customers are paying the amount on time or not. So a complete system should be made through which the business should ensure that the amount should be promptly received from the credit customers. If it, pre it prevents the business from running out of working capital at any time because the account receivable is a part of working capital. So if we have a proper management of account receivable, then there won't be any problem of working capital. Otherwise, if we have bad management of account receivable, ultimately our working capital will get affected. The liquidity problem will arise the business will find it difficult to pay the current liabilities on time because the current assets only are available for making the payment to current liabilities. Receivables management contributes to the profitability by reducing the risk of bad days. <clears throat> See, receivables management will increase the profitability. How it increases the profitability? When we allow credit period to the customers, more customers will come. Whenever we allow some credit period, whenever we sell the goods on credit, our sales will increase. When sales will increase, we can produce the goods on large scale. Large scale economies will arise. So profitability will goes up, increase in profitability. But the problem is regarding bad debts. Bad debts means irrecoverable debts. It is not certain that whatever we sell the goods on credit, 100% will be recovered. There may be some customers who may not pay the amount that is called bad debts. So bad debts have to be controlled. How to control? A number of steps are there. By following those steps, we will try to minimize the bad debts. So if we minimize the bad debts, definitely our profit will be more by investing the money in receivables. Now, objectives of receivables management. 
why this receivables management will be applied receivables management will be applied so that on one hand profitability should increase because when we sell the goods on credit sales will increase secondly we should try to minimize the cost incurred in this receivables management the cost are regarding the interest charges or bad debts or collection charges etc now sales growth first of all the goods are sold on credit in order to increase the sales if a business sells goods only on cash basis there are no receivables no receivables management but what will happen sales will be very low when sales are low the profitability will be low so in order to increase the sales the business has to sell the goods on credit and it leads to receivables management first objective sales growth second increased profit naturally there is a direct relationship between sales and profit higher the sales higher the profit so increased profit that is also one of the objective thirdly sales retention that means today's market is very competitive market if our business do not sell the goods on credit the customers will go to competitors business they are offering credit in that case our sales will be lost our customers will be lost so we have to retain the sales we have to retain the customers how to retain the customers don't allow the customers to go to competitors when competitors are allowing the credit period we too must allow the credit period in this way the sales can be retained these are the objectives of receivables management now factors influencing the size of receivables now see when we give more credit period definitely the sales will be more the profitability will be more but the disadvantages are also high what are the disadvantages naturally when we give liberal credit period more credit period the sales will increase profit will increase but our money will be blocked for much more uh, time period when uh, more time period money is blocked our interest charges will increase see here we have made the investment in receivable for our rupees 1 lakh we are giving 6 month credit period to the customers so our 1 lakh rupees is the cost of production that is blocked for 6 months that means we have to pay the interest for the suppliers of funds we are paying the dividend we are paying the interest charges so when our money is blocked so our interest charges will increase that is the problem secondly collection charges when we give liberal credit policy period a number of collection charges will arise similarly the bad debts chances are more because more credit period more possibility of bad debts so if we make a liberal credit policy these are the problems but if we i mean adopt a strict credit policy like one month only one month credit period we are allowing to the customers then what will happen naturally our profit will come down because the our competitors are allowing 6 month credit period and we are allowing only one month credit period the customers require more credit period so all the customers will go to competitors business we will lose the customers losing the customers means losing the business so how to decide how much credit period should be allowed it depends on a number of factors so what are the factors to be considered for determining the credit period so first factor is size of credit sales how much is the credit sales is the demand elastic demand or inelastic demand suppose our products demand is inelastic inelastic ka matlab ye hai ke the the demand is fixed whatever credit period we give the sales are remaining same so why to give more credit period will give less credit period because the sales are not changing similarly if if the uh, i mean demand is completely elastic demand in that case we have to give more credit period so before giving the credit period we have to see what will be the effect on the sales is the sale very much uh, i mean 
I mean very much uh, affected by the credit period, then we have to give more credit period. Next one is credit policy. Which policy we want to adopt? Liberal policy or strict policy? Liberal policy means lengthy credit period. Stricter policy means shorter credit period. So we have to consider how much our competitors are allowing. Accordingly, we have to frame the credit period. Next one is collection efforts. That means there should be some collection procedure. Once we sell the goods to on credit to customers, we should not wait till the due date and uh, uh, expect that customer will promptly come to the business and pay the amount. He may not pay. So we have to give the reminders. We have to send the statements. So our business must send the statements, reminders to the credit customer that their amount is due. Please pay, make the payment like this. Reminders should be given. These are called collection efforts. Next one is terms of trade. How much discount we are allowing for early payment? Normally cash discount will be given if the customer pays the amount before the due date. Like that different terms of trade. Interest will be charged on overdue. If the payment has become due but the customer has not paid, some interest will be charged. All these terms of trade must be there. Expansion plan. When the business wants to expand, first of all, if it is a new market, we should give more credit period. Once our business is established, we can reduce the credit period. Last one is habit of the customers. All the customers are not same. Different nature of customers are there. So we cannot make a rigid credit policy. For some customers who are very good customers, loyal customers, to them we can give more credit period, like three months or four months. Some other customers are there who are not genuine customers, but they will always make delay. According to our past experience, we know that this customer will always make delay in the payment. So we will give shorter credit period. So we have to see what is the habit of the customers making the payment. So these are the factors to be considered for deciding regarding the credit period to be allowed, size of the receivables. Now, objectives. Objectives of receivables management. The main objective of receivable management is to promote sales and profit of the firm to the level when the return on investment is more than the cost of additional investment in receivables. The main objective of receivables management is to maximize the sales. When we maximize the sales, our profit will also increase. But we cannot indiscriminately sell the goods on credit. Very cautiously, the business has to decide to whom we should sell the goods on credit, how much amount we can be able to sell, what is the credit period we can give. So very carefully, we have to adopt the credit sale. Otherwise, what will happen? Bad debts will arise collection charges will arise, more interest charges will be paid. So all this the business has to consider and then implement the credit policy and increase the sales, increase the profit. The finance manager has to decide the optimum credit policy of the firm which gives maximum return on investment. So ultimately it is the responsibility of the finance manager to decide how much credit period should be given so as to maximize our sales and maximize our profit. That is the objective of receivables management. Now, importance of receivable management. Receivables management are very, very important presently because every business selling the goods on credit, lot of competition is there. If we are not, I mean, selling the goods on credit or we are very strict in collecting the amount all these things will make a negative impact on the business. That means that we will lose the customers. The customers will go to the competitors. So we have to retain the customers. How to retain the customers means we have to make a prudent credit policy, receivables management, so that we should get more advantage from receivables management. We should get more return from the investment in receivables, right? And allowing too much credit or not measure, managing credit policy carefully could result in irrecoverable debt. 
if we careless if we, if we carelessly sell the goods on credit without thinking we are liberally dis, indiscriminately selling the goods what will happen bad debts will increase the irrecoverable debts will increase that's a loss to the business and this represents a loss of income to the company affecting both profitability and cash flow so without thinking without analyzing if we indiscriminately sell the goods on credit more account receivables leads to more bad debts then there will be loss of income loss of cash flow that will be the impact so this is very important this receivables management topic is very important in the present period last two topic is aging schedule a business will have so many customers credit customers from whom money has to be received from some cust for some customers the credit period is one month for some customers two month three month like that we have different customers so we will analyze we will classify all the customers according to age for example we are having 100 customers in those 100 customers how many customers are there whose amount is due within a period of one month and how many customers are there whose amount is due for two months and how many customers are there whose amount is due for three months like that we make the columns classification in order to classify all the customers according to the time period age then why we make this classification to get the quality of the customers that means how much money we can be able to receive get from the receivables to get a complete insight about the quality of the credit customers we have to make the aging schedule so when account receivables are analyzed according to their age the process is known as preparing the aging schedule classifying all customers according to their age age means time period how much time period has been over since we have sold the goods the main aim of classifying receivables by age group is to have closer control over the quality of individual accounts to keep a close watch on the quality of the receivables if we make this aging schedule definitely we can be able to control the bad debts our recovery i mean system process will be accelerated the calculation of average age of receivable is a quick and effective method of comparing the liquidity of current receivables in order to evaluate whether our receivables are good or not the quick method is to prepare the aging schedule that's it so this is the complete theory regarding receivables management so in this video i have explained you about the meaning of the term receivables what are the objectives of receivables management what is the importance of receivables management what are the factors to be considered regarding the size of receivables and lastly aging schedule inshallah we will continue the next topic of inventory management in the next video